This is the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for Tuesday, the first day of August. I'm Michael Groff. Yesterday in the valley with a bit more sun and slightly drier air around, we got up to 107 degrees at Sky Harbor after a low of 85. And the climate statistics for Phoenix are in for the month of July. And it was tied for the 18th warmest July on record. And with 89 hundredths of an inch of rain in the bucket at the airport, the 49th wettest on record. You see the normal for the month of July, 1.05 inches. So obviously just a bit below normal. What about the month of August? What does that look like? Well, let's talk about it as we look outside this morning here just after 9 a.m. A few showers developing south of the metro that we'll talk about. Otherwise, partly cloudy skies right now, 90 degrees at Sky Harbor, dew points at 63, relative humidity, 41%. The winds picking up out of the southeast at 15, gusting to 29 miles per hour, and the barometer is falling. Temperatures out there this morning across the area, upper 80s to mid 90s right now, but if those showers come to fruition, might cool us off just a bit. Satellite shows plenty of clouds across central and southern Arizona in association with at least one, maybe two little MCVs, mesoscale convective vortices, as well as an inverted trough approaching the area. Here's the radar just now after 9 a.m., and it shows some light showers, rumble of thunder, maybe even an embedded moderate shower just south of the metro, probably affecting the southeast valley down toward Chandler, Gilbert, and uh, further south and east across southern Maricopa and Pinal counties. And those are going to try and build in here over the next hour or two, so we'll have to watch that. Here's the watch warning map. We've got an air quality alert for much of Maricopa County issued by the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality. Elsewhere across the west, excessive heat warnings and heat advisories for much of the west coast. On the convective outlook, a slight risk of severe storms, parts of Montana to include Billings and Miles City. A marginal risk of severe storms extends out into the Dakotas and parts of Nebraska. And as far as our weather, let's talk about that in detail as we look at the models. Here we go to the GFS. This is the 06Z run, valid at 5 o'clock Mountain Standard Time today. The big players on the board, an area of high pressure north of the state, another inverted trough moving in, and these little MCVs, these little mesoscale features that will enhance shower and storm activity like the one south of the valley this morning, kicking off a few uh, isolated showers and storms, and those could be affecting us through the noon hour. So for today, I'll call it partly sunny, highs 100 to 104, and a 30% chance of showers and storms in the valley. On a broader scale, though, across the state today, despite the fact that we have the inverted trough and pretty good moisture profile in the atmosphere, we don't have any real strong directional or speed shear in the atmosphere. So storms that fire up today won't have good updraft sustainability. They'll be pulse-like storms in nature, capable of putting down heavy rain in a localized area. So one neighborhood will get wet, another neighborhood will not. That's just the nature of the storms today. Tonight, as we go to the, this is the high res NAM this evening at five o'clock, and it shows scattered showers and storms here, but I, I kind of wonder if that's going to hold true, seeing as we have the storms around this morning in the cloud cover. I think that might uh, lead to more stability of the atmosphere later this afternoon. Still, we'll continue with that chance of showers and storms into the evening. Lows tonight mainly in the 80s. Tomorrow, kind of similar to today. Showers and storms, random and scattered in nature. I'd say a one in four chance we get wet here in the valley. Highs 101 to 105. Really the same thing on Thursday. Friday, the GFS trying to maybe bring in a disturbance to help enhance shower and thunderstorm activity. The global models have been off and on on this idea. We'll just continue with a 20% chance of showers and storms for Thursday and Friday. Highs uh, roughly 101 to 105. Now on Saturday, this is interesting, the GFS starting to break down the ridge along the west coast and replace it with troughing. And as that happens, drier southwesterly flow develops. We've seen this look on the GFS off and on for the last few days, and that appears to be back on the table. And that continues into Sunday. And if that verifies, with troughing, temperatures are not going to get out of hand. We'll still be in the 103 to 107 range, but the air mass will be drier, so overnight lows might drop off a few degrees. And chances of storms, if any, would be confined to the eastern mountains. But let me show you the European on Sunday. It's got widespread shower and thunderstorm activity across much of the west. It continues with a very robust monsoon pattern. So one model says yes, one model says no to the drawing. Let's try for a tiebreaker. Here's the Canadian. This is the GEM model on Sunday afternoon. Look at that. 
Not a whole lot of moisture across the state. It shunts all the monsoon moisture off into New Mexico and Colorado, keeping us dry. The bottom line is there's not a whole lot of forecast confidence for the weekend. I would tend to agree with the GFS and the GEM in so much as somewhat drier air will try to get in, but I would still think we have at least a small chance of showers and storms. We are due for a break in the monsoon, and I think it could happen here, but for now, not going to get crazy on that idea. Here's a Monday back off the GFS. It shows dry weather, highs 103 to 107. Here's a week from today. Tuesday, the 8th of August, the GFS continues with troughing, a short wave here over the southwest to continue a southwesterly flow, keeping us dry. Here's Wednesday, kind of the same thing, although it starts to close off a low over Nevada. And here's the end of the forecast period. This is Thursday, the 10th of August, the GFS trying to form a cutoff low over Southern California, meanwhile expanding the ridge back across the southern tier of the United States. So maybe the monsoon moisture returns. Uh, forecasting a cutoff low 10 days out would not count on that. Uh, but that was a regular staple of the GFS last summer and last uh, autumn. So we'll see. But the gist of it is that the monsoon moisture is going to return eventually. All right, let's look at the temperatures through the period. This is coming off of the GFS Ensemble. And if you're a Phoenix resident for any length of time at all, you know it could be a lot worse than this in early and middle August. Highs every day, 102 to 107. Lows mostly in the 80s. You'll take that. And that'll do it for the Phoenix, Arizona weather discussion for today. Our next video comes back here tomorrow morning. Really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. If you like our videos, be sure to subscribe to us so that whenever we post a brand new one, you'll get the notifications. Otherwise, stay cool, be safe out there, and have a great Tuesday.